everyone and welcome to episode 19 of the Spring Snowflake podcast. As yet unnamed, I think I'm gonna name it when I edit because there might be something silly that I say. Might. There will be something silly that I say. <laughs> I am currently working on one of my projects because I realised before, just, just before I turned the camera on that I hadn't actually finished a square. So excuse me if I look down every so often to make sure I'm putting my hook in the right hole. Um, my name is Sophie, uh, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Sophie Swan. I'm also on Instagram for this podcast as a spring snowflake. I tend to only post on that profile when there's a new podcast up or whatever. There is a Ravelry group for this podcast. It's quite small at the moment because I only opened it a couple of months ago, um, but uh, I aim to put um, things like when I do run, run giveaways or um, when I have something interesting to say. Um, if there's any alongs, there will be the alongs shortly. I can't tell you too much about it in this podcast, but I will tell you in the next podcast, um, which will be episode 20, which is quite exciting and I've got hair in my eye. Um, I do also, you can also support the podcast if you wish, um, either through Kofi, K-O-F-I. Um, you can just buy me a one-off cup of tea. Speaking of which, one of my favourite mugs. Does running late count as exercise? Yes. Yes, it does. This is Bird and Blend Earl Grey Creme, which is basically an Earl, their Earl Grey um, with a hint of vanilla. It's very nice. Um, now, what was I saying? Yes, you can buy me a cup of tea on Kofi or you can join my Patreon community. Um, there are three different levels of $1, $3 and $5. Um, all sorts of different things that you can get depending on uh, depending on the level. The $1 you get 48 hour early access to these podcasts and also any non-time based vlogs. Basically when I say non-time based I mean ones, if I'm doing like a monthly vlog I'll put those up for everyone at the same time but if I'm doing say a yarn show like I did for Southern Wool. Um, my Patreons, everyone from one dollar all the way up to five, um, got early access to that vlog. Um, there's also uh, being entered into quarterly giveaways and also special Patreon only vlogs, um, which are mostly life based rather than yarn based, but there will be some yarn based ones. I'm looking over that way because that's where my show notes are on my computer. People who've been here before will know that. Welcome back, my darlings. Um, the other thing you need to know about me is I also mod on the craft bank and I've got hair in my eye. Uh, I also mod on the craft bank, which is a group on Ravelry. Um, and it is, it's basically was set up to kind of emulate a food bank, but for crafty bits. Um, so if you are of a lower income um, and you're struggling to find um, the funds to buy a pattern that you really want to make, or um, there are people de-stashing yarn, if there's any kind of yarn, hand dyed yarn or anything like that that you're really interested in, go in there and see what, um, see what people are giving away. It's a little bit quiet at the moment. The only thread that's quite active is the gift along thread um, which is now a closed along um, so people signed signed up to make something a gift for another crafty person because the but the most grateful recipient of a handmade thing is someone who also hand makes things but we don't often get handmade things because people just go oh we well, can make that so uh, Lisa who is the um, creator of the gift bank um, and is Lisa Raspberry Crochet on Instagram. Uh, she and I uh, had a had a chat and we decided that actually that'd be quite nice to do a gift along. We're planning on doing it every year um, but we've got a nice group of about, I think there's 31 of us um, in the group at the moment so um, that's been quite an active thread. Even if you're not taking part please do go and have a look because there's there's some really nice little chats about like how, how do you keep a secret of what you're making from your gift from your giftee if you're on instagram and that's all you're working on those kind of those kind of questions and how to sneakily find out what your what your partner likes without giving away what you're going to make them most of us are aiming for a surprise um so i will show you kimberly i know you watch this but um I'm going to show the things I'm making later, so I will give you fair warning and a timestamp. <laughs> but yeah, so we're running a, a, a gift along in there at the moment, which is a it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, but if you 
on the flip side, if you have, if you're de-stashing anything and actually you don't want to make any money, you'd rather just give it away and, and win brownie points and good Samaritan points and general yay, I'm, I'm helping someone points, <laughs> um, then do consider uh, donating it through the gift bank, um, the craft bank, the craft bank. Um, we'd be really grateful for your support. So um, please do go and have a look on there. Right. Um, shall we talk about finished objects slash what I'm wearing? Sorry, I'm just scrolling down in my, my page. So... Yeah. Um, finished objects, what I'm wearing. There's a hat. It's my suffrage sock head hat. So this is, I'm going to take off my head and my hair's going to be awful. I washed it this morning so it's slightly damp at the back. Um, this is the sock head hat. I didn't make mine quite as slouchy as the pattern tells you to. Um, the yarn is uh, Black Horse Yarns in the suffrage colourway. She is not dying at the moment. It's my lovely friend Beck. Um, I think she's just busy with life pretty much um but it's a suffrage colorway for obvious reasons these are the colors of the uk suffrage movement and there's also a sock head cowl i think there's a mini well she's just she's just revamped the patterns that includes all the different sizes in one pattern so um it's great it did bloody confuse me when i um went to download the pattern because I was using my phone to start with but I then downloaded it onto Knit Companion which is a fabulous app you can either have the free app or the paid for um as an annual subscription and I, I pay for the annual subscription because I find all the extra bells and whistles really helpful uh, anyway on my Knit Companion um but I went to download it on my on my iPad version of Knit Companion and I went this isn't the pattern I'm following it confused me because it, it was one size in one pattern in the previous pattern and now it's like five sizes so anyway um, I love it. It's a huge amount of ribbing because it's a turn up hat, so it's a double brim and it's got just the right amount of slouch for me. I had considered putting on a bobble, a pom, one of my faux fur poms. This is Arctic Fox by, oh damn it, I'll put it down there and I'll put it in my show notes. Um, who does amazing fur for uh, pom poms, um, and I blame Dunsnit for putting me onto them. Cowling Country Crafts. That might be it. I'll put a link in the show notes anyway. Show notes are on my blog. The link will be down below. Um, so yes, I am. Um, I finished, and this did go towards stash dash, and I didn't quite meet the seven thousand uh, meters that I was aiming for, but meh. It's fine. It's a race against yourself. I was quite happy with what I achieved. Um, Mm. God, I love this day. I'm drinking it before it goes cold. My other finished objects, I finished another hat. Uh, now, where's the back? That's the back. Uh, this is always the cutest thing ever. This is another beloved bonnet. This is actually in person because I didn't have the other one. The rainbow one I completed for last podcast with me. Um, it is a tin can knit. It's a paid for pattern. Um, you basically start on one end of the with the I-cord. I-cord increases, decreases, I-cord. <laughs> It's really, it's such a cute hat and it's got some short row shaping in the back to kind of hug the back of the head. This is the newborn size. Um, the yarn is truly hooked merino, 100% merino DK in the coral colourway. Um, I was going to, I was de-stashing this, I actually listed it on Facebook but no, but no takers. Um, and, oh that's interesting. Sorry, just looking at the increases and decreases and how they look. Um, but yeah, uh, and then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to make some baby hats out of it. So there will be a couple of these. This is going to a new baby who is due in two weeks time. Very exciting. Um, so yes, really quick make. Um, it's DK weight, so it, it, um, it goes up really quickly and it blocked really nicely on a balloon, which is how I tend to block my hats. So I blew a, up a balloon like it, it didn't. I didn't blow it up to its full stretch <laughs> for that hat. So just a bit of um, wool wash, my lovely uh, lovely wool wash from the, from Faye and knit it hook it. Um, and then 
that's that. And then my third finished object, because I finish things apparently, <laughs> is this. Honestly, this thing goes on and on and on and on. That's half of it, and I haven't sewn in my ends yet. Yeah, but there's only two of them, so it's fine. This is the Leonild, Leonilda um, scarf, shawl. I think Louisa calls it a shawl, a scarf, but it went into the shawl along because if it's not straight and skinny, it's a, it's not a scarf, it's a shawl. Um, but shawlette, shall we call it? Um, it is a pattern by uh, Louisa Sherwood of Sherwood Sherwood of the Fiber Lounge. Um, she is selling this pattern. Um, well, she designed this pattern in memory of her late grandmother. Um, it's supposed to the pattern is supposed to replicate kind of skeleton leaves. It's really clever, really intuitive. You do have to kind of keep an eye on numbers of rows and where you are. So that's where Knit Companion for me um, was really helpful because I could use the row counter on there. Um, and she, uh, they've been selling it as part of um, fundraising to basically the fallout of closing their bricks and mortar shop of the Fiber Lounge in Kings Langley. There's, there's been some financial woes that they've had as part of closing that shop. Um, so they've been uh, selling the pattern to fund that. Um, she also has been doing a crochet along called the Don't Stop Crochet Along. Um, and I mentioned that last time was um, inspired by the S Club 7 song, which is not called Don't Stop. It's called Bring It All Back. <laughs> and I put a link to it in my show notes for this episode 18. So if you want to go and have a look at that song and how proper 90s pop it was, Go and have a look at episode 18, um, show notes. Right, those are my finished objects. So this went into two cowls, it's gone into the Don't Stop cowl and it's also gone into the Shawl Along which is being hosted by Geordie Knits and the Lonely Knitter. I should show you what it looks like. Look, literally this thing, you can, you can put it, we can wrap it around once. The ends are stupidly long. The one thing she doesn't do in this pattern is tell you how long it should be when you block it. So it was over three meters long, this thing. Um, I don't think she does anyway. But yeah, so you can you can just put it round once as a kind of little summer summer shawl, or as the as the seasons get cooler, as the weather gets cooler, keep wrapping it. Now the yarn I used for this, I should, should tell you that, shouldn't I? Um, oh my god, <laughs> I'm getting it. <laughs> I'm getting completely wrapped up. Yeah, yeah. The yarn I used for this is um, a Vicky Brown uh, Yarn Book Club kind of one-off. This is um, Pima Cotton Merino in the Cola Nut colourway. It is based on the book Half of the Half of the Yellow Sun. Yeah, I think that's the, the book that, what's the, what the book was called. I'm taking this off now because I'm quite warm under these studio lights and actually the hat might come off too. Um, oh my God, oh my God, let me out. <laughs> okay. um, yes, so it's got these beautiful, like pinks and browns and yellows. It's a really, it's a really, it really suits this, this, sh this shawl, so. That's that done. Excuse me while I just get my hook. Okay, the hat's coming off too because I'm hot. Ooh. We're having a bit of a... I'm not doing a weather report because I'm not Amy Florence, but um, it's really, it's nice and sunny here and it's actually been up to the 20s again after having a bit of a cold spell. Um, Sorry, trying to find trying to find the loop in my chain um, so I can finish this square and then look up at you properly because I don't like looking up at you, not looking up at you. Right, where's my scissors? Um, so let's work into works in progress. Cut, cut. I might as well show you the thing that's on my lap. So um, I am taking part in the Whip Crack Away Along, which is run by Katie of Geordie Knits. Um, it is a closed along. We had to sign up by the 1st of July and everything had to be a whip by the 1st of July. You couldn't start anything afterwards and include it. Um, her, it's a 
basically what the title suggests, you crack those whips, um, loosely based on Doris Day, um, and I am trying to get stuff done. Um, I'm also more recently now taking part in the Project Bag 30 Day Challenge where um, Gemma, Gemma of the Project Bag was cajoled, coerced, guilted into um, being monogamous for 30 days on her projects. Um, she is very well known, if you watch the Project Bag um, podcast, uh, she's very well known for having her whip board and it's this tight it's this small like whiteboard that normally has more than 30 things on it so um, she's very much like I used to be and kind of a bit now uh, where she had multiple whips and nothing really got done um, so people kind of teased her about it and, and said well you should try and be monogamous for 30 days so she is and she's turned it into a challenge so you have a prompt every day and we're now on day seven yeah, we're on day seven of the Project Back 30 Day Challenge, that's the hashtag. Um, so I thought I'd join in and see if I could be monogamous. However, because I've got... Because I'm, I'm, my body doesn't like me, um, if I knit or if I crochet too much on just that one craft, my arm goes a bit funny. Um, so I need to be able to um, switch between the two to make sure that I don't get RSI, basically. Um, and... I have my daily temperature blanket, which I like to keep up with. I'm two days, no, I, I caught up and now I think I'm like a day behind. No, I don't think I am. I've got yesterday's to do, but that's usually what I do in the mornings and I'm podcasting at the moment, so I'll do it afterwards. Um, yeah, so I'm up to date, woohoo! Um, so I didn't want to give that up for 30 days because annoyed me that I was 15 days behind after holiday um, so yes and I'm about to be behind again because I'm going away more on that later um, so yes I'm doing I'm doing the monogamous thing but I'm being monogamous to only one knit one crochet plus my blanket <laughs> which isn't technically monogamous but it's my version of monogamous and I make the rules um, so that's what I'm doing um, so my works in progress list is relatively small for this, pod this podcast because I'm concentrating on one knit, one crochet, plus my blanket. So, although there's slightly more than that, but I'll tell you why in a minute. <sighs> Ramble. So the first thing I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you, which is on my lap, is my Truly Hooked Blanket Club. So, let's show you where I'm up to. What's the most? Ah, this is the this is the side that I'm most up to date with. There are ends which I need to sew in. So it started off with it's a it's it emulates um, a quilting technique called a half square half square triangle. So it is a two toned each. Um, I have a, a five round granny square, but they are half squares. So you switch um, colours every round. And there's a particular technique that I'm using, which um, I learnt from the crochet crowd watching one of their videos um, and it works really well you they're turned granny squares so you don't just keep going around you get to the end of your end of a round and then you turn um, I will try I don't know if it's linked to my project page if it's not then I'll I'll try and link the, the YouTube video um, but yeah so we started off um, it is the blanket club from truly hooked for 2019 uh, you get 10 months of three colors and each of my I, I got the 20 I get the 20 gram pack and each 20 gram makes four um, half square triangles in that particular colour. So I am not, I am nowhere near caught up. This is pack six. No. I'm on pack. Ooh, I don't know what pack I'm on. Mm, seven. I'm on pack seven. I'm on pack seven. <laughs> So this is the first colour of pack seven, um, and pack nine has just arrived and is going has gone in the freezer um, because I love you guys. I love all the all the all the yarn dyes that I support. I love going to shows. I don't trust that moths won't have infested your <laughs> the stuff. Um, so it's not about you. It's about me. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm on the first colour of pack seven, and it's basically going around in a big spiral. Started at purple, got, went to pinks, and then we have reds, reds, and this is the width of the, if I, 
that's the width of the blanket. So it's a good, it, it'll be a, it'll be single bed width. Um, I don't know about length. Um, but yeah, so you go from reds to oranges to greens and the last couple of packs have gone greeny blue. Um, so I don't know what pack 10 will have. That'll be interesting because we've kind of done all the colours now. Mmm. Mmm. Um, so yes, so that I'm trying to catch up with now that I caught up with my temperature blanket, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, I'm now trying to catch up with that, so I'm trying to do at least one or two squares a day. Um, obviously, I'm going away for a week in, uh, on, from Sunday. I'll tell you about that in, in life update. Um, so I'll get behind again. And I'm not taking it away with me because it's a blanket. <laughs> no. Um, yes, so that's that. That's my Truly Hooked Blanket Club for 2019. It is part of my whip crack away because I want to get it done before the 31st of January and there's a lot of squares in there. That's 40, no, 120 squares. Yes, there's 120 squares. Um, what I am, I am saving my leftovers. I'm making them into a big um, magic knot ball. Where is it? Which I have um, kind of done it as a Noster pin so that I can do a centre pull um, and I am going to be making a more tincture hat probably um, so I made a um, Andrea Maori tincture hat which is a mosaic um, hat out of the first lot of leftovers um, and I really liked it so I'm just going to keep going um, so yeah that magic knot ball is going to go into hats on a real hat thing at the moment although I'm not really making them I'm making the shawls at the moment it's going lukewarm ah that's my truly hit blanket club. I will, I'm not going to get it out, but I'll show you the bag. This is my other blanket, which is on my Stitches Tees Yarnivore Tote, which I got as part of their Kickstarter. Um, that's my blanket all wrapped up. There's yarn underneath it for all the colours. I'm about to run out of another skein of green because there's lots of green in that blanket. Um, and I will pop in a photo from about a week ago. Um, of the blanket so far. So it's had a couple more um, squares put on it since then, but I've just squared it off, which is nice. Um, so yes, that's tracking along nicely. We've had lots of green days, which is 16 to 19 degrees um, Celsius. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I, I love how heavy and weighty it is now and how I can put it on my lap when I'm, when I'm crocheting it. So um, it does seem, it is that all of my current projects, if you go and have a look at my projects on Ravelry and my in progress ones, um, every single thing I have that's crochet is a blanket. So I need to remedy that soon and I will be and I'll tell you about that in a bit. So next whip is much smaller. <laughs> um, the one that I'm currently, ooh, that's better. I think it's the black t-shirt, it's blowing things out. Um, so I am being monogamous, so the monogamous thing that I'm being on for crochet is my True to Hook Blanket Club. Obviously there's the temperature blanket as well. And the <coughs> knitted thing that I am being monogamous, monogamous on are my monster socks. So I am taking part in the, actually there's two alongs that are linked to these, to these socks. I'm taking part in the monster sock Cal 2019, which is where you basically use all your odds and ends to make monster socks. <laughs> oh, I bloody love it. Um, how cool did that say? So there's one, one that's a bit more in progress than the other. Um, I am um, making two socks concurrently on DPN, so I've got my little grey girl DPN cosies. They are living in my little grey girl sheep pyramid mag which I got from her at Yarn Porium last year um, which I don't think is going on again. Um, I will show you my little progress keepers. I have my two progress keepers from the corner of craft. I've got my little blue panda and I've got, I finally got a rainbow sheep which I'm very very excited about. If you haven't heard of the corner of craft Hannah has a podcast but she also runs an online shop selling her beaded stitch markers and she is the best at beaded stitch markers and um, I'm glad she charges what they're worth. I think she should charge more to be honest because I've seen how much work goes into them. Um, but they are brilliant and her shipping is really quick. Um, she's also a yarn dyer as well. Um, but yeah, the whole aim of the Monster Socks is to use up your scraps and use up what, what you've got left. So the leg of these are part 
Um, they're all Advent actually, apart from this colour. Uh, so the, these two, the cuff colours were Advent minis that I got in my Lay Family Yarn, yarn Advent swap that I got um, from the lovely Claire of Flowerhead Claire, Flowerhead 2 last year and then the rest of these like mini stripes up until up until the the refreshers colorway um were leftovers from my 2017 yarn and advent um from vicky brown so those of you who've been around for a while will know that i made a hexagons crocheted hexagons blanket which is now on my daughter's bed um and these were the leftovers so tiny tiny stripes not at all uniform because I just used what was left so that's the same on this sock as well um, which is why they don't match and then they have a matching uh, heels I am using the now I probably can show it better on this sock um, I'm using the vanilla is the new black um, pattern and the heel is constructed really interestingly let's see if I can there we go um, it is you basically increase in a kind of rib pattern um, so you've got knit, knit and pearls there and then you do heel do, uh, you do your heel turn as short rows and then that gets you back to your um, yeah it's really interesting um, but it's also really intuitive like once you get to the leg and length and then you start increasing um, you can it's just like doing ribs so, so you can still kind of talk to people and still it's still sociable um, you just have to keep an eye on your stitch count and then when you do the heel turn you just again you have to keep an eye on your stitch stitch count um and make sure you stop when you get to a certain point um but yeah i really like this i've tried it on um and i've got quite high uh, quite high arches and this is this is actually quite this is a good pattern for people who've got high arches um and i feel like i've got actually a little bit too much room um this kind of the ankle feels a, actually a little bit baggy um which yeah so i think the next time i make this pattern i'll probably go it's a 68 stitch sock so i might actually go down to a 64 inch on 2.5 millimeter needles so i'm using my dpns um i wasn't sure about dpns for a while and then magic loop just got annoying <laughs> um i don't like small circulars they make my hands hurt um but yeah um so i've got knit pro zings on this one and at the moment i'm just going round and round and round um, and then these ones I think are higher highers yeah they're higher just higher higher steels DPNs um, so yeah I've done the for both I've now done the heel turns so the heels done so I'm just going round and round and round on both of them so I think I'm gonna do the finish the leg on this one this currently what is attached is a stripe a self striping I think commercial yarn um, and it's a rainbow so again I'm getting gonna get my stripes I'm also participating in Sharon of the SCR1TNO uh, podcast, her Stripey Sock Cal. So that is SCR1TNO Stripey Sock Cal. No, there's no 2019 on it. Um, so you can also look at that hashtag. Um, and if you don't watch Sharon's podcast, then you should. Um, so yeah, so that's, I'm, I'm doing purposeful stripes, but also yarn based stripes um, on both of them. Um, that yarn I got from my July Christmas in July advent from Emmy um, and I've got another one which is a similar striped but not a rainbow to go in the other sock so I'm kind of there is a method ish but they will not look the same um, yeah so it's a mixture of all the like I've got this this glass jar here has got all my less than 10 gram minis yeah of sock yarn there's a few non sock yarns in there but they're all four ply um which i i now have the stripey sock bug so i think scrappy sock bug so i now think i'm going to just use them for socks the ones that i can um and the ones i can't blanket don't know i have to work it out but yeah they're all less than uh, most of them are five grams if not if there are some that are slightly more than that um so i've got some that are kind of in little hanks and there's some that have wound up into balls already so yes, uh, because I like to take part in mini swaps and stuff like that. So yes, um, these are the thing that I'm being monogamous on at the moment. Um, I'm hoping I can get them done before I get on my plane on Sunday, but if not, they'll go in my in my hold luggage because I'm not risking DPNs on a plane. Um, they'll probably get taken off me and no. Um, 
more about that later. So, the things that I've been working on before I started the, the project bag challenge um, was the Trelawney shawl. I don't think I had, I think I talked about this in my last podcast and I bought the yarn at the Southern Wall show. Um, she has, this is a pattern called the Trelawney shawl by Tyne Swedish, who's also known as Cleverest Stitch on Instagram. Um, she is running a cal, it's her first design. Um, I know Tyne through the Solidarity Swap, she's one of the moderators. And this is, now that purple is coming up way bluer than it actually is. It's Cadbury purple. Um, mm, yeah, it's still a little bit blue. It's Cadbury purple, so it's a bit more red toned than it's coming up on the camera. And then these are both truly hooked yarns. They are from, they are um, the Trance colorway and the Cadbury colorway. Um, and I bought them at Southern Wool from Verity. Um, four ply, oh. I've also got my little dragon stitch marker from the corner of craft because I thought it's a Harry Potter inspired shawl so therefore I must have dragons. Yes? Yeah. Even though Sybil Trelawney has nothing to do with dragons, um, there must still be dragons. <laughs> so it's a really lovely pattern. Um, it's a mixture of garter stripes and stocking, stocking stitch stripes. Um, in different numbers, I'm not going to give it away, and then it has whatever you have left over you make into tassels for the points and the bottom point as well. Um, so this I am going to be taking on a plane with me, I have literally just switched over the needles on it to higher higher bamboo, um, I did have my chow goos on there but if my tips get taken away from me on my on the plane I don't want to risk my chow goos because they're expensive. And these, I can unscrew them. I bought, I, I, um, I spent some money at the Higher Higher Direct website in the UK um, to buy some tips for different projects. But I also, these are the cutest things ever. I bought some cable stoppers. They're the pandas. <laughs> so if my tips do take taken off to, take, taken off me, I can stop the cables with these. Um, yeah, it's a panda knitting a sock. It's like the cutest thing ever. <laughs> so yes, um, I also got myself, I'm going into new things, but mm, meh, um, I also got myself a high higher um, tape measure, which is noisy, but it's got both inches and centimeters on it, which some of mine don't have. Um, yes, so this is coming on the plane with me on Sunday, um, just in case it gets taken off, the tips get taken off me, because I'm not risking my DPNs, so I'll be breaking the 30 day challenge slightly for being on the plane, but I think it's justified. Um, the last uh, work in progress I've got, which again I was working on before I started the 30 day project and I'm taking it away with me in my hold luggage. Um, now, Kimberly, if you're watching this, I need you to turn away and not look back until the time that I'm just about to put on the screen because these are your gift along. This is my gift along project and if you don't want to see what you're getting, look away now. You gone? Good. So, <laughs> living in my, um, this is another little grey girl sock pyramid bag. Um, this is a collaboration she did with Bernie of Bear in Sheep's Clothing and it is brilliant with all the little trees. I love it. Look, I had my hands, my, my nails done. <laughs> because I want to look professional on my work trip. Um, uh, these are also my Strictly, now, Strictly Sock Along 2019. I'm going to have to look up that hashtag, type that into my show notes because I'll forget. These are also my Strictly Socks. So I cast them on at the Strictly launch show. Um, Doing one by one twisted rib, they're socks. <laughs> Kimberly knows this, she asked for socks. Um, doing one by one twisted rib while trying to watch Kylie dance around with the professional dancers was quite difficult. <laughs> um, so, because they're my Strictly socks um, and I'm going to want to work on them while I'm away, I needed to basically break the rules slightly. Now Ali, who is Starry Eyes Ali in Little Drops of Wonderful Podcast, she actively encourages rule breaking, 
Um, so technically the rules are that you should only work on your Strictly socks while you're watching Strictly. Now it could be Strictly Come Dancing, the actual show, it could be the results show, it could be It Takes Two, which is the spin-off show on, uh, which is every, um, every weekday evening that kind of Zoe Ball, um, hosts it and tells you all about and talk, interviews all the different dancers and the couples and all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, you can also watch other versions of Strictly or Dancing with the Stars in other countries. Um, you could watch previous episodes um, of previous seasons of Strictly Come Dancing. There are all sorts of ways that you could watch Strictly and work on your socks. However, Ali also in actively encourages rule bending. Um, and there's been some brilliant rule bending in, in, the, in the past two years of doing this, this sock along. I didn't do it the first year. Um, I have decided that um, if I ever listen to Kylie Minogue, I can work on these socks. I don't know when I'd be listening to Kylie Minogue, but I could make an effort to listen to Kylie Minogue because she was in the launch show. She was awesome in the launch show. She was so good. Honestly, I wish she'd blooming done Eurovision. <laughs> Sorry. People, people who have watched for a while know that I'm a big fan of Eurovision and I was not a big fan of Madonna. Anyway, but also I need to be around sparkles and glitter and everything that's strictly if I'm working on this but not watching it. So I have my, now, this is my dye candy purple sparkly stitch marker. I also have some little gems stitch marker which kind of are like a disco ball. I've got my gin and bear it pin which if it focuses you will see that the little bear has a sparkly jumper. Mm-hmm. Gin and bear it is um it's from the beautiful um Bernie of Bear and Shoots Clothing that's her pin badge. Um and now I'm going to show you the song. So I am working on the, let's pull some out, um, Rianne Socks by Verity of Truly Hooked. And this is what I've got so far. The yarn is, oh, oh my God, I love it. The yarn is from River Knits. Um, this, is, uh, this is one of their minis. Let me find the little ball because it's tucked away somewhere, which I think is jewel purple, but I'm not sure. Come on, focus. There we go. So yeah, jewel purple. I think that's what it's called anyway. Um, I am doing these on Magic Loop, which I'm finding slightly easier um, on for the ca the mock kind of cable. It is a mo mock cable pattern. Come on. There we go. I'm on. I think I've done two pattern repeats of the leg, and I think I need to do between eight and ten. Kimberly has got quite big feet. She's got bigger feet than I have. Um, I will see if I can... Oh, and the main yarn colour, I should tell you that really, shouldn't I, is Shroom by River Knits. And it's just greens and browns and reds and a bit of blue and some yellow and it's just... Yeah, Becky's a bit of a wizard with colours. Um, yeah, so I'm on my Chow Goo Magic Loop. These are 100 centimetre, 2.5 um, needles. So if I did want to do two, by, uh, two at a time, I could. I'm not going to for this one because this is my first kind of cable-y, lacy pattern sock. So I wanted to be able to concentrate on just one. Um, I have also, because it's Strictly, the stitch marker is another one that I got from the lovely Emmy of Untangled Magpie as part of our swap. And oh my God, why are you not focusing on this gold glittery gorgeousness. So that's technically my glitter ball, which means I can, I can work on these whenever because glitter ball. <laughs> um, the pattern is from Verity's book, which is the sock drawer. That's her first sock pattern book. Um, and it is the Rian, which is these ones. So they're mock cable rather than cable. Um, but they're very clever and she's a very clever duck is, uh, is our Verity. So yes, that is my gift along um, present for Kimberly, who is my gift along partner. Um, and I'm hoping to get them to her for Christmas as a Christmas present because no, that's actually quite nice, isn't it? To open that for a Christmas present um, that's, uh, that's handmade. Um, right, Kimberly can come back. <laughs> and hopefully you've 
skipped that. Awesome. Right, those are my work in progress. The only other things I'm going to talk to you in terms of project is um, one that I'm hoping to start while I'm away, uh, which is called the Taroko sweater. I'm going to put a picture here of the finished item. It is a crochet colour work sweater. Um, I have the yarn ready. It is in my Harden Hammer 03 blue with neon stitching and the dark leather bag. I bloody love this bag. Um, I bloody love the person who made it. <laughs> um, and the main colour is going to be the, sorry, the swatch is still attached, these colour, these, these yarns. Now you'll see that there's quite a lot of difference in the colour because these are from, these are the same colour weight but different dye lots. Um, I got these in a de-stash, um, but I'm going to alternate them. Um, I also wanted to use the leftovers I had from my, where's that gone? There it is. Um, from my Mist Kingfisher shawl, which was this um, Farmer's Daughter's Fiber, Farmer Daughter's Fibers um, in the York colorway. It's 100% Montana Merino. Um, so I'm gonna use that for the sleeve, um, for the sleeve cuffs. Um, I think that should be enough for the cuffs. Um, so that's then used, but I think it goes quite nicely with these, with this color, um, particularly this color. <laughs> um, and then the two contrasting colors, are going to be, um, this is uh, Stranded Dye Works, the Stranded Dye Works, the Naive Watercolour colourway, which I bought from Amy at um, Unravel. And then this is another Vicky Brown, um, the Yarn Book Club. It is called Petricor, it's based on The Power, um, the book The Power, which I got about half an hour into and didn't like so returned on Audible. Um, so I haven't actually read The Power, um, but having read half an hour I know, or rather listened to half an hour, um, I know what Petrichor is. Um, so yes, so that's going to be another one of my colours. So if I stack, I'll just stack one of my, yeah, there, those are my colours. There's not, it's not going to be massively high contrast, um, but I think I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy that. Um, they're my colours as well, aren't they? Uh, so yes, um, I did a little swatch. It is the world's tiniest swatch and I can't find it now because it's that tiny. There. And I love how the colours work up. It's very cool. So yes, I'll be taking that away with me. Um, the, I don't think I'm going to take it on the plane because metal hook and yeah, I'll talk about the airline in a bit, but it is going to come on the, um, in the hold luggage and I'll be working on it while I'm away in the evenings. So, and there's four skeins in this bag. Look, there's so much room. So I think all my projects that are going in the hold are going to go in this bag. Um, just to make packing easier. Right, if you do want to go and have a look at all my other projects that are in progress that I've started and are part of the Whip Crack and Way, then you can have a look on my projects page on Ravel, which, which I'll link to in my show notes. Right, okay, new things. Um, for those of you who, as I said in my last podcast, I'm not showing kind of single skeins of yarn that come in a post or anything like that, but I will show yarn from um, yarn shows if I do a vlog. Um, if I don't do a vlog, I'll show it on the podcast after I've been. Um, or I'll put a photo up on Instagram so you can have a look and I'll put it up on both of my, both of my profiles. Uh, but one thing I did want to show you, so if you, want, if you haven't seen my Southern Wall show haul yet, then please do go over and have a look on that. But I'm going to stand up and show you the new thing that I was most excited about getting. can't see the whole thing that's annoying there we go this is the newest skein head design she did a mute, beautiful one last year year before um but this one i couldn't i couldn't resist so it's tattooed on the knuckles of the uh of the slightly alternative person knitting is knit and pearl can change the world and you've got a yarn ball world and i bloomin 
love it. Um, it is such a comfy t-shirt. I wore it to Southern Wool. So for those of you who watched my vlog, it was what I was wearing for day one. Um, and it's such a comfy t-shirt. We had a little meetup at Southern Wool of those who were wearing it at the Hey J, uh, Hannah Hey J um, yarns, her booth. Um, it's just so comfortable and it comes really low down. It's quite low, so it kind of comes to like just under your bum. And it's, oh, it's just really comfortable, I love it. Um, I got a large size, it is a unisex um, size t-shirt. Um, and there's there's room for it for me and I'm, I'm a UK 16, size 16, so good size range, really good size range. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. And because we took part in the photos, um, there was four of us, me, Hannah, Verity from Truly Hooked and another lady whose name I've forgotten. Um, we took part in that photo and then um, Mickey from Skinhead chose her favourite, it wasn't me, but she sent us all um, little gift, little um, stickers. Now, where is it? It's here somewhere. There it is. I've got two of these, which is the inverse of... I don't know if I got that. So, I've got two of these which is the inverse of the t-shirt little vinyl stickers. One has been um, put in my planner because I'm back to paper planning again. Um, but yeah, right, moving on, because I've been talking for almost an hour now. Um, the, I have a spotlight. It's not about a particular person, um, but there's been a lot of unrest in the last couple of weeks um, with some big names making mistakes, not handling that mistake very well, and not really learning how to apologise. Um, so I thought I'd talk about apologising, um, because it's kind of, it's something that spills out into my real world with the, being a mother of a three-year-old. Now, three-year-olds don't really understand the concept of, of apologi apologising just yet, but we do expect them to say it, which has its own issues. Um, but what I try and model with my daughter right now um, is that if you hurt someone it's nice to try and make amends um, and apologising is part of that um, so I'm, I try and model for her that saying sorry is a good thing if you've hurt someone um, but for us adults that actually have well-formed brains now, well it should be well-formed, um, brains, and that can actually understand the concept of an apology, I find it very challenging when certain people who have 100,000 followers on Instagram don't really get how to apologise when they've hurt someone or a group of people. Um, so, now, Jasmine, the Jasmine and Gigi of the Knitmore Girls have talked about apologising quite a lot on their podcast. Annoyingly, they haven't put it in their show notes because I've just trawled that through their show notes. But um, Jasmine, particularly, she tries to model and teach good apologies to her children. She's got slightly older children than me. Um, but there's, for me, there's kind of there's four parts to apologising. There's the the apology and the expressing remorse, saying I'm really sorry that I hurt you, there's the part of that is accepting the responsibility, I was the one that hurt you, there's, I'm reading my notes, there's the then the how you will remedy that situation and I think a lot of people automatically just go oh, I've done something wrong I'm just gonna apologize and, and that's it but actually being able to express how You've said sorry, you've said it, you've, you've expressed that remorse, you've accepted that it's your responsibility for the hurt you've caused. How are you then going to move forward from that situation? How are you going to remedy that situation? What is your, how are you going to make sure that that's not going to happen again? And it might happen again, because we're all human and we make mistakes. And that's the point, isn't it? If you make a mistake, and particularly if it then hurts someone, and that doesn't have to be a physical hurt, a lot of the time for children, for three-year-olds, it's a physical hurt. Um, but for the majority of the time, us as adults, if we hurt someone, we've not hurt them like hurt them. We've hurt them emotionally, psychologically. What's the other one? Other, uh, you know what I mean. You know I don't express myself very well, but I like to talk about these things because they need to be talked about. <laughs> 
So, particularly, so the situations in the last couple of weeks have been a very prominent knitwear designer, um, blocking someone, saying that they didn't block them and that it was a mistake, realising that actually that was a stupid thing to say because blocking someone on Instagram actually requires work. Um, and then like kind of trying to brush it under the table by releasing a pattern for free. Oh, I've, I've made a mistake. Let's try and let, let's try and distract everyone with a free pattern. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, my computer's told me that I've got a recommended new podcast. I'm getting distracted over there. Anyway. So. And then after that and being called out for that by a by a black person, by a person of colour, black and indigenous person of colour, by POC. Um, going off Instagram, blocking people, and then doing a really passive, aggressive, well not, it was kind of aggressive, but it was very much passive, apology. And then saying that they've got other people to look after and they're going to go, and they've got bad internet. Like, there's all sorts of white fragility going on there. But it's not the only, it's a high profile version, um, but it's not the only thing that's happening. Like, there's a lot of microaggressions, hostility towards a lot of marginalised people at the moment and that's both on Instagram and in the knitting community, in knitting and crochet community, but also I'm seeing it in my real life as well. I'm noticing it more in my real life. Um, so I've talked about the three steps, so expressing remorse, accepting responsibility, working out how you're going to remedy the situation. The fourth one, and I think this is quite important and does still need to be accept put in there, is asking for forgiveness, but not expecting it. Um, the first part of that big... I'm not going to say who it is, because if you're on Instagram, then you know about it, and if you don't know about it, then actually I don't want you to go and have a look at it, because there's not... It's just not worth it. Um, but... That... Asking for forgiveness is important because it makes, it gives the power to the person that you've hurt. Um, it allows them to make the decision about whether they actually do forgive you or not, or whether they're going to take that time to see actually what you do. Um, and that was quite important in this story where of the person who was blocked, who was, who is um, an activist as it were, um, that actually her having the power to say I forgive you or actually no I'm I don't trust you on this just yet because you've made that mistake and it's a big mistake and I don't feel like you're expressing that remorse enough or whatever it gives the power of that of that exchange back to the person who's been hurt um, and that I think is very important I think if you don't have that last step it still it still feels like that person who's been hurt doesn't really have anywhere to go um from there so that's my that's my kind of two top and were um the unfinished object blog which is a blog run by oh god sophia's on there sophia tron uh sue Creta, i don't know if frenchy from ara hanitz is on there but i think there's four or five really fabulous people who have been quite big voices in um the racism conversation i i don't i don't like calling it a conversation because it, that feels like there's two sides to it um and there's only one to me there's only one right side but i suppose conversation is better than debate so um yeah conversation we'll stick with conversation anyway um but they've got a really good post on apology and holding people to account. Um, so I'll link to that in my show notes. Um, and if you do listen to the Knit More Girls, I think probably in the last 10 or so episodes, there have been a couple of different times where they've talked about apology. I think particularly the um, episode with Little Skane Anne, talking about um, online activism for those who are, um, it's not risk averse, conflict averse. Um, so that was a really good episode um, 
and I, th I think Jasmine did talk about the, the kind of steps to apology on there as well. So yes, that's my little soapbox spotlight for this podcast. Right, moving on to life update. Um, my tea's probably cold by now. Mm, mm. It really is, I've only got a little bit left, so it's fine. Um, so, things that are happening in my life. First things first, I've been alluding to the fact that I'm going on a plane um, on Sunday. So I am, um, I think I mentioned in the last podcast maybe that I'm working again. I'm working as a tutor, um, helping students um, who are applying to university, particularly Oxford and Cambridge, um, as I used to work for Oxford Admissions. Um, there's a part of me that is quite conflicted about that because the two universities don't particularly like people privately tutoring applicants. Um, but my, it's the only way I'll be able to do it um, around my childcare responsibilities and family life and all that kind of stuff. And I'm quite adamant with the people I work with that I'm not gonna do things like write someone's personal statement for them or, or coach them on the best strategies to do for interview. Um, I stick pretty much to what I used to say when I was uh, working for the university. So um, yeah, there's a bit of a conflict there, but I'm enjoying it um, and I'm working again and um, I posted something onto my personal Facebook page um, and there's a few people who watch this who are friends with me on Facebook. I'm quite private on Facebook but I posted something about um, what's been going on and, and how my mental health has suffered in the last year and actually um, leaving work and being full-time mum was great but it did to some extent, there were other factors this year but to some extent actually losing the identity as Sophie who's working um, was quite hard for me. Um, so actually having this this work and um, but be, still being able to do it without disrupting Amelia has been really good for me. So I am I'm feeling a lot more positive in that respect in terms of my mental health. There's other stuff that uh, the therapist and I are still working through um, but definitely turned a corner there. Um, but because of this job, we are going off, uh, there's a group of five of us from the tutoring company who are going to Bangkok on Sunday for a week. Um, we fly on the Sunday lunchtime and we're back early morning on the Friday. Um, the reason why we're back early morning on the Friday is because I need to be back in the country to go to Yarndale that day. Um, my lovely husband decided that because I'd been away, I will have been away for five nights, that um, him and uh, the small person are coming up with me. So we'll be driving up. Um, we get our new car on Saturday, so it means that we actually get to drive off in our new car. I'm quite excited. Um, such a petrol head. Um, and uh, we'll be staying in a nice hotel about half an hour away from um, Skipton. I am not planning on vlogging Yarndale. There are a number of reasons for that. One, I'll be massively jet lagged. Um, Bangkok is six hours ahead of us time zone wise. Um, but also, I just don't want to give them the extra plug. Um, it's been quite difficult for me to, d to decide whether I still wanted to go to Yarndale this year because of their responses to people asking them to be more transparent about inclusivity, di di um, diversity, and how they were working to make Yarndale more inclusive and more equitable. And quite frankly, their responses have been, I think disappointing is, is not strong enough, a word. Um, the kind of last straw for me was when they posted a, a post after, like Rivenitz um, had, Becky had um, done a, a petition saying can you be more diverse and kind of the last rule for me was when I spoke to her at Fiber East and then they had a they had a um they put an Instagram post up about like offering more spaces to um marginalized people and then they ended it with hashtag be nice and I just went that's white fragility at its worst so there was a point where I went I don't actually want to go um, and I'm going one because it's an 
it's a nice weekend to see friends. There's a lot of the crochet clan that go to Yarndale and for me it'll be the only time this year that I'll see a lot of my friends that I know from Instagram in person. Um, so like Faye will be there from the Crochet Circle podcast, Beck from Yarn Adventurous, um, I think Lindsay from and then there was Morgan, Charlie from Love Charlie and she got married this year and I really just want to give her a hug. <laughs> um, Sam, um, Sharon from My Crochet Makes who I've never met but I count as a friend online. All these people are going to be there so that's my primary primary reason for still going is because it's a for me I'll be seeing my mates um, and also it's quite nice for us to get away as a family now that when Krista's kind of suggested that we go and do it it's quite it's it'll be nice to get away and have some time with the family okay I'll be at the, the yarn show for, for, for the daytime but actually in the evenings and um, yeah so that's why I'm still going but that's also why I'm not vlogging um, I will pop pictures up on my Instagram, I'll show you what I buy, I'm not planning on buying that much, um, I have a shopping list, I'm picking some yarn up from Lola of Third Vault, I'm picking up some yarn from Tara of Irish Artisan Yarn um, as payment for making her the love shawl um, a couple of months ago, um, I'm going to go and see Fruitful Ishrat from Fruitful, Fu Fruitful Fusion? Yes, Fruitful Fusion Ishrat, um, I'm going to see Bernie from Bear and Cheap's Clothing, um, Kaz from Wooler, like people who I like and are decent human beings um, who I want to support their businesses. Um, so there's a couple, there's a, there's definitely more on that list, um, but so I'm not planning on buying very much, um, but I'm going to go and support the businesses that I do like. Um, so that's my plan. Yeah. Anyway. Going back to Bangkok, I'm going out to Bangkok for work. We're doing a, a conference for a school out there. Um, they are flying us out there. They're putting us up in a really nice hotel. Um, it's quite full on. We get there, so we fly out at midday on Sunday, which means we get there about 6 a.m. on Monday morning Bangkok time. Um, we've got Monday to acclimatize. We start bright and early at eight o'clock on Tuesday and we go right through till about 4, 4.30 on Thursday and then our flight from Bangkok leaves at 55 minutes past midnight Friday morning i.e. Thursday night um, and I land back in Heathrow at seven o'clock on um, Friday morning <laughs> get the train back home shower repack up to Yarnto <laughs> um, so I've been thinking about all the projects that I need to take obviously so I'm going to take um, my monster socks if I haven't finished them by then, my uh, gift along uh, socks as well, my uh, Trelawney shawl for the flight as I mentioned earlier with the bamboo needles, I'm going to take the high high metal needles to swap over because I don't really like knitting with the bamboo. It holds onto the yarn a lot more but I don't need it with that with that shawl. Um, I'm also going to take my in here, my Montana Mountain Cowl by Andrea Maori. It's in plastic and there's not much. Oh, here we go. Um, there's not much to show, like there. <laughs> it's a um, mosaic knitting um, project, but I have it currently on. Uh, oh, are they on higher highs or are they? Oh, it's on higher highs, but I have also bought. No, it's on Chow Goos. Um, I have also bought some bamboo needles in that size for that project. So um, if I finish my Trelawney shawl, then that can be my plain knitting on the way back. Although I am planning on sleeping most of that flight, um, if I can. Um, and I'm going to take my Taroko sweater and work on that while I'm at the hotel. Um, so yes, that's the plan. Um, the other things that have been happening, I am getting really back into my fitness. So I went for a taster session um, uh, on a Saturday morning, three hours and 15 minutes of non-stop exercise, five different taster classes um, with my lovely friend Gemma, who is Gemma Pierce Fitness. If anyone is in the South Oxfordshire area, you should totally check out her classes. She does Zumba, club size, Pilates, box fits, rock box which is basically a mixture of box size and zumba to rock music with drumsticks, very cool. Um, bar fitness which is what I was already doing which is ballet fitness, um, 
all sorts of stuff. So if you are in the South Oxfordshire area, Abingdon, Didcot, and the surrounding villages, check out Gemma Pierce Fitness. I'll put a link to her in the show notes. Um, but it, uh, going to that taster class, um, taster sessions really reignited my excitement for doing classes. So um, I'm gonna try, I try to do a club size on a Monday night now. I have personal training with the fabulous Sean um, on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings. I have Pilates on Tuesday evenings now. I have bar, ballet fitness on Thursday mornings. Is that it? And I need to try and get some triathlon swimming, uh, triathlon stuff um, sorted. Have I told you about the triathlon? I don't think I have. <laughs> I've signed up for a triathlon. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Blenheim Palace Triathlon, the super sprint, like the really, the really short version, um, in at the end of May next year. So yeah, 450 meter swim, 11 point something kilometer bike ride, and then 2.9 kilometer run. So yeah, I need to, I need to get on that. So that's that's another reason why I'm getting in on the fitness. So getting my, getting my cardio done, which will get my stamina levels up. Um, weight training to get my my legs particularly strong enough to do my running and my cycling um and i need to start doing going for swims uh 450 meters is fine but i need to obviously it's going to be freshwater swimming so i need to go and try out there's a freshwater lake that um, allows swimming near here so i need to go and try that out um getting back on my bike putting road road tires on my bike um and getting running again because i can't i haven't run in ages um so yes, I'm hopefully, he has just, Sean, my lovely PT, has just sent me a program to do at the hotel next week. I don't know how much I'll get to go to the gym, but there is a gym um, and it's open like 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and it might help with the jet lag a little bit. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's happening. If anyone wants to sponsor me, it's quite early. If anyone does want to sponsor me, I'll put the link in my show notes um, to my Just Giving page. Um, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I'm really looking forward to it. Right, I've talked for a long time. <laughs> for someone who didn't actually show me that many projects, I've talked for a long time. Um, so I'm gonna go um, and I will see you on the other side of Bangkok. Um, I need to get this up and edited and posted for my patrons patrons before I go so I'm gonna try it's a it's Friday the 20th yeah Friday the 20th of September right now um so if I can try and get it up for Saturday night to my patrons that means then they'll have 48 hours and then I'll pr I'll press publish properly on YouTube on the Monday you'll be seeing this so you'll know what my timeline is <laughs> but yeah that's my plan anyway I am going to go Thank you so much for watching and listening to me ramble as always and I will see you on the next one.